Well, joining me now from Washington, D.C. is Omar Samad. He's a former Afghan ambassador and was a spokesman for the Afghan Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Good to have you back on the program, sir. A new attack by the Taliban while they're talking to the United States in Doha. Do you expect them to continue to do this, attack while talk? Unfortunately, um, and if you look at the history, uh, these types of attacks uh, do take place when negotiations are taking place because uh, either one side or all sides want to gain leverage uh, for, for the talks, uh, for political advantage, uh, trying to send uh, messages as signals. Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a tragedy when uh, civilians and innocent people are on the cross road, the crossways, and get hurt. But um, I think that this process uh, is reaching a certain stage that is critical at this point. Um, attacks are taking place on all sides. Uh, all sides are engaged in an escalated form of violence and fighting over this fighting season. It started a few months ago, uh, first initially initiated by the Taliban, then the government responded. And so it's been a very bloody season, unfortunately, for the Afghan people. But talks aiming at peace, in a peace that is durable, a peace that is inclusive, a peace that is just, uh, is one way to resolve this problem. And I think that uh, we are at a stage, as I said earlier, where it's going to be critical to see how this peace is going to sh take shape, what it involves, and what the results might be, depending on the politics and the geopolitics very complex situation that surrounds Afghanistan. But, of course, you say there have been attacks on all sides. Of course, with the Taliban, they're specifically targeting civilians, whereas the Afghan government and the coalition would say, well, we're not targeting civilians, but civilians are caught up in the crossfire. When this happens, while they're talking in Doha, undoubtedly this is embarrassing for Zalmay Khalilzad and everybody else who says, let's put the, let, let, let's, let's have the Taliban at the table and let's talk to them and let's come to a resolution. Will they be wrong if they decide we're going to walk away from the table because you continue to target civilians? Is it a bad idea for the U.S. to walk away? Well, you, you, you end up with uh, different opinions about this, and we, we see that uh, there are those who say we need to stop, halt, postpone, uh, even cancel altogether, walk away. And there are those who are saying, no, uh, you need to continue because there are more important things to be gained from this. At the end of the day, Afghanistan has been at war for 40 years. The past 18 years uh, have seen all kinds of ups and downs and uh, surges and ends of combat missions and beginning of combat missions, and nothing has really changed except for the fact that the enemy, in this case the Taliban, have gained more territory uh, over time, uh, there, are, there's, there are more casualties, there are more body counts across the board, whether it's on this side or that side. And uh, we need a political settlement for Afghanistan, and we need an end to this carnage and to this, uh, this level of violence that Afghanistan uh, is experiencing. Now, how do you do this? Right now, there's this one process. We haven't had a credible process. We haven't had a serious process at any moment in the past 18 years. This is the one that was started by the Americans because they're involved in this fight. Uh, and this is the one that involves the Taliban as well as many countries in the region. So I don't think that anyone is seriously considering throwing this away at this point or even postponing it because we hear uh, from other sources that at least the part of the deal between the Americans and the Taliban is now reaching some type of maybe uh, culmination and final stages are being worked on. Uh, so it has to, obviously, from a political point of view, continue. And those who advocate stopping it would have to have a very strong reason and an, al an alternative to that, because that is not, uh, in my opinion, sufficient enough reason, because fighting could continue despite talks, and it could be worse. Uh, at some point, we need to have a ceasefire. And the sooner right. we have a ceasefire, the better it is for all. I know the Taliban is very active on social media. They watch and listen to what's being said about them and what's being said about Afghanistan. What's your message to the Taliban? Well, my message to the Afghan Taliban who do not have ties to international terrorism and who are not part of a, an external agenda to subjugate Afghanistan is that Afghanistan is everyone, every Afghan's home. Uh, you know, we have had this process where over the last 18 years, almost all elements are now 
within Afghanistan, part of the post-2001 structure. The Taliban are the only element out. They need to be incorporated. The ones who I said, you know, fit that bill. They need to be incorporated in a way that is acceptable to the majority of Afghans, if not all Afghans. And it does not undermine the gains of the main and the essential gains of the, eight, of the past 18 years. We need a negotiated settlement. It is not going to be easy. It's going to be probably difficult and long. But at the same time, there is a certain uh, level of responsibility that lies not only on the shoulders of the Taliban for what they need to do uh, and need to make sure that they uh, improve their credentials, but also on the, on the side of the Afghan government and those who either want to pursue war, conflict for their own interest, or those who uh, are doing it for political and power and continuation of power reasons, or for those who obviously have other ulterior motives. All sides need to realize that this is an opportunity. We cannot lose this opportunity. We have to make the best of it. But at the same time, the alternatives are not that great. And Afghanistan sliding back into a state of conflict, continuous war, as they call it, and uh, endless war, uh, is not a pretty sight uh, and not something that the Afghan people in the majority want. Ambassador Omar Samad, great to have you back on the program. Looking forward to chatting to you sometime soon. Well, to discuss this further, let's bring in our panel. Marzia Baba Khail is a former Supreme Court judge in Afghanistan. She was forced to flee after the Taliban made an attempt on her life. Diva Patang worked at the Afghan embassy in London. She's now a TV host for Radio Television Afghanistan. And in Annapolis, Maryland, is Michael Kugelman. He's the deputy director of the Asia program at the Woodrow Wilson Center. Good to have you all joining us on the program. Marzia Babar, uh, Khail, are you as optimistic as Ambassador Omar Samad, who says, well, yes, these attacks might be terrible, but perhaps they're symptomatic of the Taliban trying to gain leverage because the, the peace talks are working and we're close to some sort of agreement with the United States. Do you share that optimism? Uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, but uh, about the peace process, uh, especially that happening uh, two days before in Afghanistan, we sacrifice uh, the civilian children. I'm not uh, uh, very uh, optimistic about the peace process in Afghanistan. Uh, you know, they should, uh, the cycle of violence must be stopped in Afghanistan. Uh, the people want peace, but never we want peace with killing people. We want peace mm -hmm. with peace. Diva Patang, is it a catch-22 situation for the Afghan people? Because if there's no deal, violence continues. If there is a deal, there are fundamental fears that absorbing the Taliban back into society means possibly accepting some of the terrible things that they want in everyday life that they had when they were in power. Is it a catch-22? Well, uh, first of all, uh, when, when you say about deal, uh, when it comes to peace, uh, in peace, there, uh, there are force deals will be made. Uh, but um, uh, as, as we're talking about peace right now, we, we don't have no other, uh, no, ad, no other choice other than just having a peace. Uh, uh, Afghanistan doesn't have uh, uh, any other options but to, to, to talk to the Taliban. Uh, we had this mistake uh, that uh, we didn't include them in the, in the Bonn uh, um, conference at the beginning, and now we're facing all these issues. So uh, I know that uh, uh, Marzia Kakarhil just right now mentioned that uh, uh, we, we want just peace and nothing other than peace. Uh, we, we have witnessed that a lot of other countries, as Colombia or other countries, they, they have been through this, uh, 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 the peace deals and the ceasefire, uh, that uh, any any peace that you you try to reach, there will be of course uh, casualties. We will be having people dying from it. And uh, if, if we don't actually have a peace, this war will continue. And as uh, Ambassador uh, or um, Saman rightly mentioned that, uh, uh, that uh, and he has been very optimistic, and I would strongly agree with him. Michael Kugelman, if the U.S. walks away now, what happens? Well, I think that if the U.S. were to walk away, if it were to stop negotiating, um, and if it were to pull, start to start pulling troops from Afghanistan, which President Trump really wants to do, you really have to worry uh, in a big way about uh, stability in, Af in Afghanistan. You really have to worry about uh, things falling apart in a big way. This is not to say that maintaining U.S. troops in Afghanistan makes the country stable. I mean, clearly we see that's the case, and in fact, 
One thing that I find quite troubling is that in recent months, according to uh, recent figures, uh, the number of civilian casualties um, that have come at the hands of U.S. forces and Afghan forces and those allied to them has actually increased. Mm -hmm. um, so you could argue that, unfortunately, on some levels, a U.S. presence is even destabilizing. But above all else, clearly, there could be major problems if the U.S. were to pull out. Uh, not only would it be uh, a huge uh, victory for the Taliban, putting it in a better position to, to, to scale up its fight, but it would also help um, these terror groups, particularly the, uh, the ISIS faction in Afghanistan, to, um, to take advantage of, of the security vacuum and to become stronger. Uh, I, don't, I would not overstate the strength of the ISIS faction in Afghanistan, but it's remained resilient, even though it's been hit hard by, by right. U.S. and Afghan strikes over the years. Marzia, you have a very personal stake in this. The Taliban came after you very personally. Do you trust them at all to be able to make the compromises no, needed never, for peace? No, never I trust the Taliban. You know, the Taliban, uh, when we uh, go to the reality and we see the, the history of the Taliban, what they did in Afghanistan, we start to be nice with them and start the peace process. The peace process is not a competition, it's a peace process to bring peace in Afghanistan. We cannot ignore all the bad things about the Taliban. Uh, uh, for me, uh, and also I am behalf of people in Afghanistan, because I can feel the pain of mom. I can, mm -hmm. I can feel the pain of people, they lost their, uh, their uh, loved one. Uh, I am the behalf of the women. They sacrifice uh, their lives in the Taliban regime. I'm really, I cannot support the Taliban uh, discussion and peace process. Mm -hmm. Diva, the Taliban wants to wait it out. The Americans want to get out. With that in mind, they have the patience and they seem to be a very robust organization that will use any methods at their disposal. Are you afraid for the future? Of course, uh, uh, we are worried about the, the future of Afghanistan. U.S. has actually uh, spent, spent billions of pounds uh, in Afghanistan to, put, to bring some stability and, uh, uh, and also to fight the terrorism. We have now the chance to talk. We are at the best time to talk to the Taliban uh, and to negotiate a peace deal because we cannot ignore the, uh, the Taliban, because uh, uh, most of them are uh, Afghans, but what is very, very important is, uh, of course, uh, uh, for, uh, uh, for the Afghan government, is to include the opposition in the, in the, in the peace talk, because the opposition uh, uh, of the government, and as well as the government, they mm. need to work together to be able to, to make uh, to, and come into a peace negotiation with the Taliban. Right now, what we are having, we are having U.S. talking to the, um, the Taliban, but uh, uh, we, we don't have a lot of interaction of uh, the Afghan government, and we have some interaction of the opposition of talking to the Taliban. What they really needs to happen is the opposition and the Afghan government together to come into uh, around one table and uh, to come into compromise and and talk to uh, to the Taliban to reach the peace deal because we don't have no other option but other than. Uh, uh, to join hands and uh, and agree with, uh, with a peace deal. And I know that the ceasefire, ceasefire is extremely important, but when attacks such as in Kabul, what happened just uh, two days ago, tragedies as such will actually have a, a huge impact on the on the peace deals because it will bring trust issues and it will be bring, uh, bring um, uh, and also uh, uh, the issues of uh, uh, not trusting each other and as well as uh, the discouragement of right. the peace deal. Marzia Babakar Khail, will it make a difference if Ashraf Ghani got on a plane and went to Doha and the Afghan government was actually involved in those peace talks? I think, uh, yes, because the, the peace uh, talk should be uh, with the government. Uh, government is responsible also to the American uh, uh, government. Uh, sh uh, they shouldn't uh, ignore the government of Afghanistan because they're the, the head of the country. Uh, for me, uh, it will be uh, a big change of if they involve the government directly. Michael Kugelman, looking at Trump's mindset and what he wants to achieve here, very revealing interview with Tucker Carlson, one of his preferred interviewers. Uh, he called 
Afghanistan the Harvard of terrorists. He said, I'd like to get out, or just get out. The problem is it just seems to be a lab for terrorists. I call it the Harvard of terrorists. And he said he wants to get out, but then he would leave very strong intelligence there. Which is interesting because he sees everything purely through a security lens here. Does the US president have a, have a strategy? And if so, does he have a good strategy? Well, I mean, President Trump is so hard to predict because he changes his mind, and it's really hard to say exactly what he's thinking. My sense is he's never been comfortable staying uh, in Afghanistan, even when he agreed um, to stay uh, in Afghanistan. Um, I think that for now, he's going to let the talks play out. But I think that if we get to, uh, you know, a certain point, whether it's a few months or whatever the case may be, and the talks have not yielded the comprehensive peace agreement that the U.S. may want, he would not hesitate to uh, try to zero option and all of, the, all of all U.S. troops out, which, as I noted before, would be a disaster. The issue here is that, uh, you know, the few senior officials in the White House that had his ear on issues like Afghanistan and who wanted to stay in Afghanistan they're no longer in the White House. You know, H.R. McMaster, the former National Security Advisor, former Secretary of Defense, James Mattis, they're gone. Very few people left in the White House that, quite frankly, I think are really passionate about Afghanistan and favor uh, staying there. So that suggests that it could just be a matter of time before President Trump uh, decides to withdraw, even if there's a deal. So I do think at this point that he does buy into the terrorism argument, right. that you need to keep a true presence there um, in order to push back against the terror uh, concern. Marzia, do you have a message for President Trump? Uh, my message will be for him. Please change your mind. People in Afghanistan need peace and peaceful life. You know, the, uh, we sacrificed all our life. We don't want to be, again, uh, to sacrifice for other uh, uh, like political agenda for other people in other countries. We need peace. Afghanistan people need future. But do you believe that you will be abandoned if the United States just left immediately? You know, the United States, they put the, a, a big budget for peace process. If really they want to help Afghanistan, they can, they can uh, give this budget, your, give this possibility to our military to become more in power. For me, uh, it is, I think, should the government of Afghanistan, they uh, give this answer. Uh, I think it's the best way uh, that America should just make a clear agenda for Afghanistan. Diva, as things stand, it seems as if the Afghan military, the Afghan security forces does not have the firepower to fight the Taliban and Daesh and the all the other groups. Uh, this is for Diva. So, Diva, with that in mind, is the practical thing to have the Americans stay for as long as they can? Uh, well, Americans, first of all, will be staying. Uh, they will not be going anywhere. They have spent huge amounts of money in Afghanistan. They are in Afghanistan for their own national interest. So it is for the, their national interest to stay in Afghanistan. Even if they're talking to the Taliban, it's because of uh, their own national interest. So if we, if they leave Afghanistan today, uh, they know that uh, uh, they, they will have security issues in, uh, in America themselves. So uh, uh, if, if they are right now in Afghanistan, uh, and they are assisting, of course, uh, uh, our military and our security. Uh, but uh, what really needs to, uh, to change is uh, it's how the neighboring countries are actually uh, treated. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, because most of them, uh, uh, the threats are coming to Afghanistan and the civilians that are getting killed is due to uh, uh, the neighboring countries' involvement and, uh, uh, and a lot of uh, connection to the terrorist network. You mean, so you mean Pakistan, Diva? Well, that you can name it, but uh, 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 what I'm uh, trying to say is that uh, uh, you've talked about uh, Trump's strategy. Of course, he wants to leave Afghanistan and to show to the American people that because of elections is coming in, in the U.S. and he wants to win and he wants to show that everything is fine in Afghanistan. But uh, overall, if you think about it, um, the, the military uh, in the U.S., they don't want to leave uh, Afghanistan because they know that if they leave Afghanistan, the security uh, of their own country will actually uh, be in, in a war situation. So the best thing for uh, uh, US to do is to uh, change their strategy 
to how they are applying the pressure into mm -hmm. to the neighboring countries around Afghanistan. Marzia, there are young American soldiers being deployed to Afghanistan for their first tour of duty who weren't even alive when 9-11 happened, which was the reason many uh -huh. Americans went into Afghanistan. When they ask, what are we fighting for in Afghanistan, what would you tell them they're fighting for? You know, it's, it is not about the message for between uh, Afghan people and American soldiers. I appreciate the American soldier and international soldier. They came in Afghanistan and they sacrificed as well. They uh, bring peace, they keep the country safe, my country safe. Uh, and my message always be much appreciated all the things they do for Afghanistan. And Afghanistan needed till we stand uh, uh, like uh, in, our, uh, in our power. Uh, the big movement in Afghanistan now, uh, you know, the young generation is a big hope for Afghanistan. Uh, I think uh, for me, uh, anybody is uh, give any contribution in Afghanistan is a, is a big thing for I see. all Afghani people around the world. Diva Patang, what are young Americans fighting for, if they had to ask you? Well, they're fighting for their own security to, to keep uh, Americans safe and to, to keep it uh, um, away for, from things that happened like 9-11. Uh, this is what they're fighting for. But uh, uh, because they're fighting it here in, in Afghanistan, uh, we have our own soldiers, our own security forces that they are dying. They are the front line. They are fighting uh, not just for, for the Afghans to keep the land safe, but they're also fighting in, for, the, for all the international uh, security because uh, uh, we, have, uh, uh, we are sacrificing every single day. Afghan security forces are dying. So it's not just the Americans who have lost, uh, of course, a lot of their lives, and uh, we have lost a lot of Afghan uh, security forces too. So the, the fight that is happening right now is that they're fighting the international uh, terrorism, which is, uh, which is the duty not just of, uh, of uh, our Afghan security, but it's the duty of uh, uh, worldwide that it should be fought, and it should be fought as a jointly. Diva Patang, Marzia, Babakar Khail, and Michael Kugelman, great to have you on the Newsmakers. Thanks for joining us.